Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Today, I wanted to talk about hearing the voice of God. That is a question that I get a lot. How do you hear the voice of God? What does he sound like? What does that even mean? I think a lot of people, especially who are newer to the faith or it's becoming more real to you. Maybe you, you know, got saved or you were, you grew up Catholic or in a church setting, but now you're like wanting to find a relationship and build a relationship on your own. Um, A lot of people, you want to know, like, how do you hear the voice of God? You watch sermons or pastors or preachers and they speak with such knowledge and authority and they say, God told me this or God shared this. And, um, and I mean, I do the same thing because it's a relationship. It's not a religion. It's not just me following a bunch of rules in a dead book. It is a, Jesus is a living person. His spirit indwells in us who, those of us who invite him in and acknowledge him as Lord. And through that, we have access to him 24 seven. He is closer than a brother, closer than a father, closer than a friend. Like he's just everything in my life. And I, I can't imagine, I talk to people all the time, like fellow believers, and we just look at each other and we're like, how do people do it without God? Like, how do they live? How? And not even just the good times because I feel like the sweet times and the good times are even sweeter and even better and even more enjoyable when you know where it's coming from and you know that it is the Father in heaven blessing his children. Like that is so special. But when you are going through hell, when you are walking through the darkest and the hardest times, to not have the presence of the Lord like holding you and carrying you, I just can't imagine. So in a little bit, I want to share a couple a couple little verses, if you will, first. But in a few minutes, I'm going to share with you, literally straight from my journal, a entry that I did. It is on, it was on, I think, July 21st of 2020, I believe. And basically, we had just, um, six months prior, we had lost our first baby girl. Um, after <clears throat> battling infertility, had a surgery, got pregnant. Most of you know the story, but the bullets, real quick, couldn't get pregnant. Um, was you know, My husband and I were trying and then found out that I had severe endometriosis and fibroids. Like my uterus, according to, the, to doctors and by all natural accounts, there was nowhere for a baby to grow in that, in that environment. And so I had a surgery. It was successful. I got pregnant. Um, We were so excited. Our first daughter, a baby girl, um, everything was perfect. Textbook, every test was clear. Um, Anatomy scans clear. I was fine. I had so much morning sickness, but nothing out of the ordinary for some women. And um, third trimester comes, we are planning uh, the delivery, um, where we're gonna be, the whole thing, and she passes away no explanation no reason um you know autopsies tests everything that came after that no no answers no reason and on one hand i was really really happy and really grateful that there weren't any reasons because i feel like i could look at it two ways i could either look at it as you know well it's just oh it's so hard even to regret even just to like go back and think about it because I remember just I remember how and it still hurts I mean it's still painful to go back and think about if I really let myself go there I'd probably cry but I'm not going to today um but I remember thinking okay I can either be grateful that there's no reasons because that means there's nothing wrong with me like and if there is they haven't found it and they've done extensive extensive testing but I could either look at it as this was a fluke and a freak thing and I may never know the answer but according to tests and everything like I'm healthy there's no reason I wouldn't be able to carry children after this but then on the other hand I was kind of bummed that there wasn't a reason because there's something about our human brains and the way we're wired where we want a reason we want to either place blame or we want to understand we need to know and I think that that's that human flesh part of us because the opposite of that desperate needing to know is having faith that God has us in the palm of his hand and he's gonna work all things together for our good. And so I was like, okay, I can either be upset and bummed that there isn't a reason or I can choose to rejoice that they didn't find a reason. And therefore I can in faith be excited that my next pregnancy, in Jesus name I'll have one and anyone that comes after that will be healthy and normal and this won't happen again. This was just a freak fluke thing that happens sometimes. And so, Basically, I got pregnant with Ashton. 
probably like five, between five and eight weeks pregnant. It was before the first um, appointment, I think, or maybe I had one, I had had one ultrasound. It was in the middle of 2020, so COVID was happening. And I remember, I knew I was pregnant. I had taken pregnancy tests. I, I was still, I wasn't showing, but I was waking up in the middle of the night every night. And so what I'm gonna read you from um, my, jur my journal excerpt, if you will, my diary, um, is just a really cool God story about how he spoke to me and I heard him and he gave me perfect peace for the rest of that pregnancy when I don't blame anyone for having extreme anxiety and stress um, because you don't know what's gonna happen. So anyways, so going back to hearing from God, I think the first question is, how does he speak to us? Because that's one thing, it's like, well, does, is he audible? I have heard people tell their stories of hearing God audibly. I have never experienced that. So I'm just gonna share from my perspective and my experience, God has never spoken audibly. That being said, there is an overwhelming, like it's almost, loud in my soul so it's like a booming assertive knowing or like something is getting my attention but in the way that i'm speaking to you right now where there's like a certain tone of my voice and a quality of my voice and it's a certain pitch i don't hear anything like that but um he speaks to me the most i think through his word but he also speaks in prayer through his holy spirit when we become christians and we invite jesus in um, I think we, I feel like in one of the last podcasts, and maybe I'm wrong, we talked about Jesus, you know, ascending to heaven and I'm going to send a helper. And so he sent his Holy Spirit. So when we receive Jesus, we get his Holy Spirit. And it says in the Bible, I don't know exactly where, but that he will teach you all things. And so once we have the Holy Spirit, now we have the presence of God and literally the person of Jesus, like indwelling, living inside of us. And so that still small voice, I hear it. I hear it in, um, it's hard to explain. It's like a different language that only your soul understands. And so I have to, I have found that if I don't quiet the noise, both figuratively and literally, um, it's harder for me to hear him. So if I'm in a super chaotic environment, overstimulated, it doesn't mean I can't hear him, but for me and my personality, it is a little trickier. I have to really focus and there have been moments in busy settings when I start to feel something off and instead of suppressing it or pushing it down or ignoring it or leaning into it and inviting a spirit of anxiety in, I will pause even in the chaotic environment and be like, Holy Spirit, is there something that you're trying to tell me or show me or teach me or whatever? And I will wait and try to listen and try to hone in and block out the noise to see if I hear the voice of God in that moment. And it's really cool because he will speak to you. A huge way that God will speak to you is through his word. If you are not sure if God is telling you something, you got to get in the word more because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this will show you, this book shows you his nature and his character and who he is. And so when something comes up or if you feel like you hear a word or if someone else comes to you and they say, oh, I have a word for you and they tell you something, if it doesn't line up with the Bible, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, it's not God because he's not double minded. He doesn't say one thing here and then tell you another thing because that would make him inconsistent, which would then make him not God. So the Bible is the, I believe, infallible word of God. Does it all make sense to me? Nope. But that's where faith comes into play. Do I wrestle with some of it? Do Kellen and I have tons of conversations all the time about what do you think what do you think about this how do you feel about this what do you think he meant with this and those are fun discussions but ultimately at the end of those we always go back to all right we're going to put it on the altar and be like lord i would love to know the answers to these questions if you so see fit please let me know but regardless of anything i trust you i believe in you and i will pursue you and follow you no matter what god also uses other people to speak so in the same way that people have messaged me, which is so sweet, and they're like, God totally used you to speak a message to me. We are created. We were created and are created to live in community and to, to live with one another and to edify one another. So there are people that are literally in the office of like being a prophet, which is a specific gift on their life. I believe we can all be prophetic because we all hear the voice of God. Um, but there are some people who hear very specific, very strong um, 
and God uses them as his mouthpiece to speak in the natural, something to people, specific people, corporate words, whatever that is. And so I've had many of experiences where God has used people to speak to me. And it's really special. Um, the one thing I will say is sometimes in the moment, you will just know it's from God, you will feel it. And some of you have experienced that where you were just like, I got really warm or I felt really this or that. I just knew it was God. I knew it. There was something in my soul, kind of like I was talking earlier that like, un, um, it's just a different language, right? It's a language of its own and your soul recognized what was speaking to it. But I always, always, always think that we should take everything and compare it to the word of God and bring it to God and just check it, fact check everything. Because sometimes what happens is I've said this before and I've shared it with when I was, you know, when I met Kellen, when I met my husband, if you've ever prayed or, or said anything out loud of a desire or need, not only does God know it and the people you confess it to, but the enemy knows too. And I think that sometimes the enemy's favorite thing to do is to bring things that are disguised as a um, prayer request, but they're actually not from God. So I think in the same way with words, when people speak words over your life or they try to speak things into you, even if I'm excited about it, I always take it to God and say, Lord, I respect this person because of X, Y, Z, or if they're a complete stranger, now there's no basis for, you know, respect. I'm like, Lord, I didn't know that person. And I bring it to God and I say, was there, was there validity to that? Did that make sense to you? Is that, and always, 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 he will either lead another person that I trust to confirm it, or he will bring me to a scripture or whatever. So he does speak, um, all the time. He speaks to me in all those different ways. One thing I do really want to, um, pinpoint, if you will, I hear God the most, the more obedient I am. And I feel like when we are disobedient, I don't even know, sometimes in my disobedience, it would create chaos. And so disobedience, often it will it's sin, right? And sin is separation from God. So the way I kind of see it in my mind is when God would speak to me something or the Holy Spirit would tell me to do something and I didn't obey, it created distance. And so in order to hear God, and for me to hear God, what I was doing is God's voice doesn't change. He's not like whispering or refusing to speak to me. He's like, I'm just, I'm a gentleman. I'm not going to scream. I'm speaking and I'm here. Whenever you want to hear my voice, you can come into my presence and hear it. But disobedience, whenever I would disobey, it was like I was running away. You know what I mean? It was like I was creating so much distance that I couldn't hear him anymore. And so I had to, Our the last podcast was about repentance. And one of the biggest benefits and the biggest blessings of repentance is it makes you able to hear God's voice more clearly. Because basically what you're doing is you're kind of like getting all of the roadblocks and the bumps and all the things that distance, you're closing the gap basically. You're getting everything out of the way, parting the Red Sea, and you're getting closer to him. So now you can hear his voice. There's less noise, there's less distractions, there's less things. So if there's any um, benefit, and there's so many, to obedience, one of the greatest ones is that you can hear the voice of God so much more clearly when you are walking in obedience. So if those are the ways that God speaks, the other question is, well, how do you hear him? So if I know that he's speaking in these ways, but how do I hear him? And my biggest, my biggest tip is to listen. And it's like, what does that mean? Get in the word, read, and don't just read it, invite him in. Before I pray every time, I stop and I quiet myself and I just say, Lord, I pray that you would speak to me through your word. Let this be alive. Um, let the words leap off the page, show me things. And even if he doesn't, even if it's not this amazing words leaping off, I read in faith that I'm still getting nourishment to my spirit and my soul, and I know that he is going to speak to me. So maybe today I don't feel like it was this crazy, amazing, audible thing, but eventually when he does bring something to my remembrance, then it's like I'm here in the New, New Testament and I'm reading something and then I'll feel him say, remember, remember that back in this? And I'll be like, wait a second. And I'll go back here and I'm like, oh, that's how that connects. And it's these really cool moments. Or sometimes he will take a scripture I don't want to say he'll take it out of context, but sometimes he'll take it. Obviously, the whole Bible has a context to it. It was written thousands of years ago for in a different culture than here in America. Um, but he will take scriptures and use them to show me things about my own life as well. It's really, really beautiful. So get in the word. Quiet time. 
like prayer and whatever that means to you. I was in a women's group the other day and they were talking, um, the ladies were sharing about how they hear God and how some women like light candles and they have their prayer closet and their journal and everything's aesthetic and they lay on the floor and it's amazing. And this other woman was like, I hear God the most when I'm out with my horses. Like the other day I tried to go read in my bedroom and it was dark and I just wasn't getting anything. And I was like, Lord, I'm trying to pursue you. And she just felt God nudge her to say, go outside, just go outside. And she was like, okay. So she went outside as the sun was rising and then the birds started chirping. And the moment she walked outside, she encountered his presence and he downloaded all this beautiful stuff to her. So I think the other way that we can hear the voice of God is to get it out of our minds that it looks the way that it looks for someone else that we're supposed to have this certain environment or this certain prayer room or this certain place that we're supposed to be. God can speak to anyone, anywhere, any way he wants. And maybe he wants to speak to you in a different way. So it's really nice and it's very encouraging and very exciting when we see other girls and guys and whoever getting these downloads and these words from God and spending this time. But it, the time that you spend with him doesn't have to look like the time they spend with him. In fact, it probably should look a little different. I think sometimes we get inspired by people so we wanna replicate. And the whole point of being inspired is to go pursue God and be like, Lord, what do you, like, what is your manifestation of this? Because sometimes, I don't know about you, but you, when you try to recreate what someone else is doing, what you're actually trying to do is recreate a feeling that you think they had or maybe they did have. When really what it is, is I feel like when we get inspired and when we get excited, when we see people doing things, I think the whole point is that's God causing our spirit to kind of leap to do our own thing or to do what he's called us to do. So I just want to encourage anyone out there who's comparing what their quiet time or their Bible time or their prayer time looks to other people. It doesn't have to look the same, especially if you're, you know, a mom or have a full-time job or what, like it's going to look different for everyone. Someone who is single who has their whole day and works remotely, maybe they can get up and spend two hours, but then there might be someone else who's super busy. And for you, it looks like I have to be on, you know, a train by 5.30 a.m. So I'm going to take 15 minutes and I'm going to calm everything and I'm going to forego, you know, washing my hair and I'm just going to spend that time with God. And so it's like, but then you're looking at the two hours that she spent and you're like, is this enough? And I just want you to be confident in the time that you can spend and let God, let God show you what he wants, you know, let God say, hey, let's spend a little more time. Or hey, you know, you're, you're doing this out of a religious spirit, not even a desire to connect with me. So just give me what you can, give me what your heart can give me. But one of my favorite verses is John 10, 27, which says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And it's one of those things where the more that you listen for it, the more you will hear it. And I think sometimes people you know, we watch a lot of TV, we listen to a lot of podcasts, we listen to a lot of worship music, we do a lot of that, and that's not necessarily bad, but I think sometimes we're like, we don't hear God speaking, but we have all these other voices running nonstop, and so I think that there is such an importance to quieting the noise and just asking, and again, it could be literal or metaphorical, you could still be in a busy place and just quiet your mind and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to speak to me right now. Get in your words so that you know what his word sounds like. You know what his character and his nature is like so that when you kind of think you hear something, you can quickly reference it and be like, yeah, that, that sounds like God. That sounds like the voice of God. And then also obedience. The more you hear something and you feel like it's God and you act on it in obedience, the more sensitive you will get to his voice. And like it says in John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them. It's like, well, the more you listen for him, the more he'll speak to you and the more he speaks to you, the more you know his voice. And on that note, I want to share a practical example with you of hearing the voice of God and because I was looking for it. So there was a period of time, like I shared earlier, I was pregnant with Ashton. We didn't know it was Ashton yet, but I was pregnant. I was newly pregnant and um, I kept waking up in the middle of the night. I didn't know, we, I was very early. I could feel the pressure in my uterus, so I knew something was happening in there. I knew there was a baby in there, but it was still very early. And so I kept waking up in the middle of the night and um, it kept being the same time every single night. And this was not like, oh, two nights in a row. This was like five nights in a row, six nights in a row. So there was one night that I wrote this in the middle of the night and I wanna read it to you and I think it will bless you. Okay, here is that journal entry. 
I've been waking up at 4.40 a.m. so many times that I just feel there's something to it. I've been waking up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, usually around 1.30, but then I wake up again at 4.40, not having to use the restroom, but wide awake with my mind racing. Not necessarily in fear, but not in peace either. I've been having pressure slash discomfort in my uterus off and on, something I remember from my last pregnancy, which was 100% fine and normal, but still uncomfortable. And when it comes in the, in the middle of the night or in the wee hours of the morning, my mind just starts racing. I know I'm not having a miscarriage because there's no blood. When something inside of you dies, your body does what it needs to to expel, heal, and get back to 100% life. Except that mine didn't do that six months ago. My body carried death without recognizing it or wanting to let go. How can I be confident that I can trust my body in this time when it proved it wasn't trustworthy? Now, sidebar, I've come a long way from this. This is when I was still healing. I felt like my body betrayed me. And I think a lot of women who have gone through miscarriage or stillbirth, sometimes that's just part of it. Not everyone feels that way, but I was going through, I was just wrestling with it. I wasn't mad at my body. I was just like, I, I didn't feel like I could trust it. Let's continue. I woke up again this morning at 4.40 a.m. Actually, I woke up before then, maybe 15, 10 to 15 minutes prior. I'm not sure. I didn't have to use the restroom. I was just uncomfortable and there was pressure in my uterus. We're supposed to leave for a super gorgeous, fun, can't wait trip in two days. And I kept getting flashes of what if something happens while in the middle of nowhere? What if I needed another blood transfusion while in the middle of Yellowstone or on a freeway? Again, my mind wasn't necessarily fearful in these scenarios, but there was a little anxiety and my mind was just racing. I rolled over again and again, trying to get comfortable. I cuddled Kellen, but he runs hot and turns out I run hot while I'm pregnant too. So while it was comforting to hold him and feel his heartbeat, the inferno that is our bed made that cuddle short-lived. After however long I thought, I wonder if it's 4.40. Not, I wonder what time it is, but that specific of a question. I wonder if it's 4.40, because it had happened so many nights prior. So I leaned over and tapped my phone, sitting on my nightstand, 4.40 a.m. As much as I'm awake in my mind, I'm not wanting to be on my phone illuminating the still pitch black room, thanks blackout curtains, with light. But it wasn't a coincidence. I knew in my spirit I needed to look up what the 4 and the 40 represent in the Bible. So first, when I looked up four in the Bible, this is what it said. In the Bible, number four means creation. This number directly relates to the creative ability of God. It would also be the mark of seasons, which was used to identify different celebrations and feasts in the Bible. Among everything that was created are four important elements, which are earth, air, fire, and water. Immediately in my spirit, I knew God was telling me that he is the author of life. He gets to write each living thing into existence. The two words that jumped out were creation and ability. He has the ability to create life and he has done that in my belly right now. The next thing that jumped out was how the number was used to identify celebrations. Immediately in my spirit, I felt this is a celebration. There's life inside of you. That was comforting, but I knew there was more to it. So I looked up the meaning of 40 in the Bible and here's what it said. Mentioning 146 times in scripture, the number 40 generally symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. Moses was also on Mount Sinai for 40 days and nights on two separate occasions. You can find those verses in Exodus, receiving God's laws. Jesus was tempted by the devil not just three times, but many times during the 40 days and nights he fasted just before his ministry began. There are far more 40s in the Bible, but those are the ones that stuck out to me. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And you know what else is 40? Pregnancy. A full term pregnancy is 40 weeks. Whoa. It was like God was saying to me, I'm creating new life on the inside of you, number four, and you are going to carry that life for a period of time that will test you and try you, the number 40, but you will get the reward you're seeking this time. I was blown away, but still needed a little more maybe. The last thing I did think was, I wonder if there's a chapter four, verse 40 in the Bible. So I just simply Googled chapter four, verse 40, and this is what came up. Mark 440, he said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? 
In Mark, just before this, it says, He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And then I knew. God wasn't rebuking me in a punishing way, but he was telling me, I already silenced the waves of that storm. This isn't a storm. You know that. I've got this. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. That he would take the time to wake us up night after night, trying to speak things to us while the world is silent and it's quiet enough to hear him. And I always want to be aware and awake when he calls. Jesus, please don't let a moment go by where I miss you and miss what you want to say to me. Thank you for your sweet, sweet presence and your ability to transcend all that we're thinking about and feeling and cut straight through to the core. I love you. Thank you for this little baby. Kellen and I have already offered them back into your loving arms. Give us the grace needed to raise a God-fearing, Holy Spirit-filled world changer. In Jesus' name. Isn't that so cool? I haven't read this in a little while, and when I read it again today, I was like, I got to share that with someone because, and the whole point of why I share this is because I easily could have been frustrated. I could have I could have been annoyed and agitated that I kept waking up in the middle of the night. I could have just put the pillow over my head, but there was something in my spirit that was like, I keep waking up, I keep waking up, and the set, you know, 4.40, whatever, second night, 4.40, that's interesting. But there was something in my spirit that was looking for what God wanted to say to me. And like I said in this prayer, or like I said at the bottom here, I always want to be aware and awake when he calls. And I am someone who loves sleep so much. It is hard when I wake up. But ever since this experience, ever since he gave me all of this, this is such a gift for the rest of my pregnancy with Ashton. When the enemy tempted me with anxiety, when he tempted to bring me down, when he tempted to say, oh, do you know also when I was pregnant with Ashton, one thing we had was a Doppler. Um, and I didn't use it much because I didn't want my faith to be on the Doppler. I didn't want to be like ruled by anxiety, but we did have a Doppler and there was one night, there was no heartbeat. There's nothing there. The Doppler had fresh batteries. And I remember in that night, God saying, go back and read that. And I went back and I read it. And then there was something that happened also with Kaysen and I read it again. And then I threw the Doppler away. I was like, well, I didn't throw it away. I gave it away. But I was like, you know what, Lord, my faith is not in a Doppler to tell me. I remember when, because it was with a Doppler, that I found out that our first daughter had passed away. I went and I was laying on the table and I remember to this day the hollow sound of no heartbeat. And I decided I don't want to put my faith in this Doppler to give me peace when I hear the heartbeat. Now, am I saying that you shouldn't get things checked out if, if, if you're feeling off? No, absolutely not. Please don't mishear me. What I'm, because I, I did that um, a couple times. But what I am saying is that my faith was not going to be, and my, my peace was not going to be reliant on something external. In those moments that I was feeling a little stirred up and a little lacking of faith and a little fearful, I read this and I was like, you gave me this before I knew it was a girl before at the beginning of the pregnancy so that I could enjoy the rest of my pregnancy. And so I just wanted to encourage you guys with that. Look for what he wants to say to you. Look for those things question him, ask him things, write notes down. I think one thing, one of the biggest things is whether it's your phone, although that can wake you up, or just a piece of paper, a notebook, and a pen, keep it by your bedside. Write things down. If you have a weird dream, if you feel like he's maybe wanting to tell you something, it doesn't mean you have to fully wake up and start your day at 2.30, but if you write those notes down to revisit later, I also think in doing that, God's like, okay, I can entrust you with even more because you're there waiting and willing to hear me and receive what I have to say. And I'm gonna end this on this note. Um, when I was reading about 40, um, cause I woke up at 440, basically when it talked about Moses, it says Moses was also on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights on two separate occasions. I had completely forgotten about this, but Ashton was born at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. And it just felt like a perfect little bookend. So that being said, God speaks all day, all the time. Yes, there are moments where it feels like he's silent. If, the, if that's the case, if that's where you find yourself, go back to the last thing he said and just keep doing that. But he speaks through his spirit. He speaks through his word. He speaks through others. Also, the more obedient you are, the more clearly you'll hear his voice. At least that's been my experience. 
And um, how do you know, or how, are, how do you hear him? Just listen for him, look for it. One of the greatest things I ever did was change my question from God, where are you? Like, a, like you're not even here, where are you? To, okay, I don't see you, I don't hear you, but like, where are you? Because I know you're here. Where are you working? Give me a little sneak peek. But that is it. I hope this blessed you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.